I was thinking, Aren't bars such wonderful places where you can meet new people and talk a load of bollocks and be forgiven the next time you walk in if indeed anyone but the landlord, I suppose they don't exist anymore, can even remember. But the whole purpose of a bar, i.e. getting drunk and don't lie, if I just wanted to socialise with inebriated strangers without endangering at least one of my internal organs and save my money and hang around the local bus shelter, is responsible for the many downsides of going down the pub. I can't remember the last time someone rammed a mug into someone else's face at Starbucks, nor do I recall stepping through a thickening film of piss in the men's bathroom in the local brasserie. Although I will admit, bars do have the best condom machines, the ones in McDonald's are always terrible flavours, so what can we do to make bar life just a little bit more easier for everyone, if not at all more dignified? Forget about tipping, that's a different episode. If you're somewhere that expects tipping, tip, and if you're not, don't. Oh my god, I should be in the UN. So let's start with rule number one, the rule you should never break no matter what. Don't shit yourself. That is the one thing that is universally expected. Do not shit yourself. Do not shit yourself. If you shit yourself, then go home and never come back. Even if it was a sober accident, even if a sudden wave of food poisoning came over you, if you shit yourself in somebody else's business, don't ever go back there until you have had plastic surgery and voice training and a personality transplant. The amount of times I've seen an innocent bar stool made good for only burning after someone shat all over it, that could have been used in a Jewish wedding or to smash over a bull man's head. What a senseless waste. Anyway, number two, that's the second bar etiquette rule, not me reiterating the sentiment of shit, although yes, shit, don't get into fights. I just don't understand why people get all rowdy in bars, what with Subway putting bouncers on the doors past 7pm these days. It's pretty likely someone bigger and better equipped than you, and with the unfair advantage of not being three Sambuca headfuckers into hallucinatory oblivion, will take out all their pent-up rage about not being allowed to be a policeman or not being allowed to be one anymore on your skull. This, of course, like sallow young men with crusty spots around their mouths selling what they're calling ecstasy, is more common in clubs. That incredibly loud, obnoxious sort of environment where there is as much room to move safely as a wobbly minefield. Aren't they fun, drunk, angry young people with fast music pumped into their brains and lasers flashed into their eyes? What could go wrong? If you've got to have a go at someone for looking at someone else, or looking at you but not in a come and chase me sort of way, or maybe too much in a come and chase me sort of way, or if you're mentally ill, put the white wine down, go outside against your willing opponent, strip to your pantaloons, and let the Hunger Games begin. If you ask me, they should let people do this free of fear of prosecution as long as they suck up a massive bong hit on the way out, then at least if they don't dissipate any ill will, the fight will be far more entertaining. Number three, pay for your alcohol, or at the very least get somebody else to pay for it for you by prostituting yourself just a little bit. You can do this by wowing people with your ability to name an animal with any letter of the alphabet, hint, quezacotl, and x-ray fish, or flashing about your big hairy tits. Never negotiate the price of alcohol. If you wanted a good deal, you should have bought a cheap bottle of vodka or a 24-pack and sat at home watching Flash Gordon and eating microwavable meals for one, you sad but also thrifty bastard. Number four, don't get your cock out. I know what you might be thinking, what a redundant thing to say, but unless you two are in AA, alcoholus, or summoners, in which case prost, I have been to many more bars than you. I mean, probably Probably not, but I have seen someone decide to air their todger all quite, quite too much. Of course you're not going to get this in genteel little places with flowers on the tables and 27 types of wine, but I tell you what, I was going to say I'd take a dive bar with a flasher in it any day, but now I'm having second thoughts. I have literally seen people piss in the corner of an O'Neill's. I have seen people get their cock out because, I don't know why, to entice other people with their cock out. Or because they're 19 and in the army and haven't realised indecent exposure is something everyone else can agree is a stabable offence. If you want to create confusion in a bar, just shout the word paedophile and point. This brings me on to number five, don't be a dickhead. Think of it as not spitting in your host's eye, or more literally, not calling the local town a cesspool when surrounded by local townsfolk. It's just common sense, people, although you're probably right. I once saw someone thrust a switchblade into someone else's gut and be promptly told that they were barred for two weeks. It's simple, really. The bar staff are on their own side or the local side. And if you're just visiting, you're never going to endear people to yourself by being a prick. There really are no advantages to agitating people in bars because you never know who's going to take offence and you never know who's going to use that offence as an excuse to smash a shit-stained bar stool across your head. Just a thought. Also, don't shit in the urinal sunshine. This isn't prison.